So full disclosure, I never quite spoke about myself for 25-ish minutes in front of an audience. Um, actually, some of my friends might disagree, so like, let's just stick with it. I've never like, <laughs> spoke to myself in front of so many people. Um, so we'll see what happens today. Thank you for being here. Hi, my name is Ingrid. Um, I work as an engineer for Intercom in Dublin. And if you ever work with me or hang out with me or talk to me, you probably know that there's quite a few topics that tend to creep in. Uh, one is about technology, of course, I love my job. The second one is humankind and consciousness and hacking perception and philosophy. And another one is every time I get to convince people that I'm secretly a vampire, which is not very hard to do. It's not very hard to do. I have very pale skin, blue eyes. I come from Romania. So, you know, it's kind of, <laughs> you can probably see the resemblance there. All right. I'm going to focus on the latter for a second, and I'm going to bring some evidence to the fact that I'm a vampire. Uh, two years ago, I started doing yoga, and I started doing it in an attempt to just manage stress and sleep better, and there were a lot of my, a lot of my friends doing it at the time, and I was very impressed with their positive uh, experience over that. I was kind of skeptical, but I, um, I decided to give it a try because everything else kind of failed at the time. Um, so basically I just started uh, trying it like in my living room, see what was going to happen. And about three days in, I felt confident, en confident enough to like close my eyes doing a tree pose, which looks pretty much like that picture, which is in the middle of the desert. <laughs> um, I'm good that way. Um, so, and just see what happens. I, I felt brave at the time. And I was shocked that... I was shocked about how insecure it felt and how scared I was and how it felt like I'm losing balance and I'm going to fall on my butt, something bad's going to happen to me, I'm going to break a leg, break an arm or something. And after seeing some very nice encouragement, like, you can do it, Ingrid, that looked something like that, um, I, was, I, I just started, was just trying to realize what happened there. And what occurred to me is that while I always described myself as a very confident person, uh, I trusted my brain, I trusted my problem solving, I'm an engineer, what the hell, I've been doing this job since I was 19. Um, I didn't trust my physical abilities at all. Um, I didn't trust that I'm strong enough, which is kind of weird because I was going to the gym regularly at the time, and I was probably the strongest that I could have, I ever was before. Um, and then I started thinking if maybe this has something to do with the fact that I'm very, af very afraid of heights. Fear of heights is something that I've struggled with throughout my life. Um, it kind of creeps in in a weird way as well because I love flying and I love taking panoramic pictures. But at the same time, I'm afraid of something like climbing trees or standing on an unstable structure where like if I'm on top of a chair and it starts to like move, ooh, that, is, that is very scary. And I also secretly want to bungee jump. I love the idea. I secretly love the idea of bungee jump. I would love to do it without having a heart attack though. So um, I kind of went, okay, you should probably do something about this. Um, coincidentally, um, it happened the week before the Bram Stoker Festival in Dublin. And one of the things that they were doing at the time is a vampire zip line thing across the city. So I would kind of saw my opportunity to fly across the city fearless, <laughs> kick my fear of heights butt, and also test my theory. So what I did is call my friend Susan. Susan is the opposite of me. She's very adventurous. If there's something outdoorsy or crazy, she's going to be there. I'm kind of like, nah, this is that. No, I cannot do that. Um, so I called her because I knew that the second I was going to tell her that I want to do that, there's no way in hell she's going to let me not do it or for me to like convince myself that there's a way to get out of it. So I called her. I kind of told her, like, look, this is what happened. And, you know, I think I kind of want to do this. And it looks awesome. And she was like, yes, yes, let's just do it. Um, so we went. And... Before getting on that awesome platform, six meters above ground, we actually got some very cute vampire capes that I was terrified that they're going to like catch into something and whatever. Um, and I remember standing on that platform and being incredibly terrified and trying to talk with one of the volunteers was uh, just walking us through what we have to do, like hands there, you know, being strapped in, hold on to that, off you go. And I was like, what do you mean off you go? What, what, if, what, if, I, my, what if my hands don't work? What if I let go? What, what is going going on. So I spent about a minute trying to ask as many questions as I can to make sure that I am safe, which was probably a bit crazy considering the cute people that was behind me and that I was actually kind of like being very opinionated about having to wait 20 minutes in the queue and like how I wish it would go faster. And then here I was. 
So that was fun. And then Susan was like, just, just stop overthinking it. Just, just do it. Just do it. And I got to a point where it was like, okay, I don't have any way out of this, so I'm going to do it. And I swear to God, the second I stepped out of that platform, my thoughts were exactly that, please don't die. And then it was more like, just please don't die. Please don't let go of your hands. Just like, just, just don't let go. Just hold on very tight. And I think every muscle on my body was like very, very tense at the time. It was pretty crazy. Um, a, a few seconds in, though, I realized that it was actually pretty freaking easy. It was very easy to do. It wasn't no rocket science, and I kind of just enjoyed the ride. And I ended up um, actually being very proud of myself. And there was this huge weight off my shoulders. And then I went, oh, I actually did this. It's the first time. So that gift thing, there's actually a video. It's like a minute video of me actually talking with the guy up there, so I'm not lying. There's proof. Um, so. Um, what made me, made me realize is that I actually probably throughout my life put my fear of heights and the things that I can't do in a little box and I kind of threw away the key and I focused on what I was good at and you know like I'm in a job where you have to be confident, you have to be able to uh, you know treat yourself as an intelligent human being. So I kind of focused on that, put everything else aside and I was very happy for a while. But this felt absolutely amazing, I felt really really proud and I really, really, really encourage you guys to try something that you don't think you can do just to at least test the theory. So this is kind of what we're going to talk about today and what's going to happen. Uh, this day pretty much changed my life. It changed my perception of what I can and cannot do. And um, yeah, let's, let's see how the rest of the uh, debugging fear um, goes from here. It also made me start climbing and it made me actually look more into yoga and look more into going to the gym. I believe into that. I'm a believer. If you're interested in any of it, let's have a conversation after the talk. I would love to know your opinion about it as well. All right. Uh, strange noise in the back. <laughs> Excellent for like a debugging fear talk. <laughs> All right. Um, I also kind of realized that I don't know a whole lot about fear. I know that it exists, but I don't know what it does to the human, uh, to the human body and to the mind. So from a scientific point of view, what happens when you're afraid is that your pituitary gland sends a signal to the adrenal gland, which is in your kidneys. And that's how adrenaline gets produced, in like very simple words. And that's what makes your heart rate fast, like your heart beat faster, your pupils dilate, and your, mus excuse me, your muscles activate so you can potentially you know, run from a bear. So from a scientific point of view and an evolutionary point of view, adrenaline makes perfect sense. If there's a bear like one meter away from you, your hormones better kick in so you can like just run the hell out of there and save your life. But it actually turns out that stress like work and money and mortgage and heartbreak can actually add an increased increased pressure on your brain on your, on, and on your heart. So from like an anatomic point of view, it triggers the same response as if you'd have a bear a meter away from you, which is very interesting. When you're stressed, your body secretes something call, called cortisol, which is like the stress hormone. And cortisol is directly linked to chronic fatigue, depression, sleep deprivation, uh, the, the stressed immune system, and inflammation, which would make you actually not be able to perform uh, to your full capacity. Not sleeping means not performing. We probably, we've all had long nights. I'm getting old, I can't do that anymore as well. So like I see it, I see it more and more. It's kind of scary. The good news is that there is a natural uh, cure for that, which is ox oxytocin, which is also called the cuddle ho hormone, ironically, which means that you can combat the amount of cortisol that you have in your body naturally just by surrounding yourself uh, with positive people and positive social situations. like conversations or being in love or hanging out with friends or going for drinks. So that is like a natural way for your body to defend against stress. Now the story and the reason why I'm here today. Um, growing up, I kind of believed that I could do anything. Um, I wanted to not have a normal life. I wanted to have a great life. I knew I had the capacity to do great things. So I kind of went on with that and I believed in that. And unfortunately at the time, there weren't many people in my life that were able to tell me how to get that. They were more like my parents were very encouraging. Yes, you can do it, of course, but there was no solution to that. There was no, here's a recipe for you to succeed. So I pretty much said, okay, I'm going to do it my way, trial and error, right? And I kind of, it kind of generated into a bit of running, running and searching for that something, that's something that's great, that's something that I believe in, that's something that fits with me and my philosophy and mentality and life and such and such. 
which, you know, as I grew older, I became more, comf more okay with it, I guess. Um, and it became more of like less running and more, what can I do next? What can I do next? What is the next step, next step for me? About a year ago, a um, year and a half ago, I was lucky enough to be in the kind of situation that felt right. Professionally and personally speaking, it just felt right. There was no struggle. I wasn't on the right track for getting that's something that I always believed in. It just felt really, really right. And then in a second, it became very, very clear that it wasn't going to happen anymore. And while I won't go into many details around that, um, my point is that basically everything that I believed in and that some people said that, you know, you're crazy for believing that. Some people were like, you can totally do it. And some people offered me advice in the recipe and some people were like, nope, that is just pure crazy. You're, you're crazy, that's it. Um, so I built my life around what I believed in and then it was gone, just like that. Not like tragically gone, but in a way that would shatter my confidence, gone, which is exactly what happened. So I kind of went on drifting for a few months going, okay, that happened. What do you do next? I had no idea. What do you do next? I have no idea. And then my friends were like, Ingrid, you're great. What are you talking about? Like you're one of the most driven, confident, person I've ever met, like you were team lead at 21, you kicked ass, like, come on, like, are you serious right now? You're being way too hard on yourself. And I was like, sure, I hear you. I hear you. I don't feel it anymore. I don't feel that I'm that person anymore. I, nope, 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 nope. It makes sense, but it doesn't, there's a disconnect there. It doesn't, something doesn't click. For me, things have to click. I'm, I know that there's people that are naturally very good at many, many things. I'm a person that is naturally bad at a lot of things. And then I, I'm, I'm good at some stuff, um, but then I have to work for it. And I always kind of say that, you know, I am able to do it when it clicks, kind of like the vampire zipline thingy. It clicked, so I did it. It made sense, it was clear, so I did it. And then I lost that click thing. And I, didn't, I wasn't really sure how to get it back, so I kind of drifted. Um, at some point though, I kind of realized that I can't drift anymore. So I went from drifting to, I have to do something. I have to do something, I don't know what, but I have to do something. So I was like, okay, I need a career change definitely, because I'm definitely, I think I could do better. So I'm gonna talk a bit about interviews and fear of failing, which I've seen and I've talked with a lot of people before. And also a question that creeps in a lot in our industry, which is, am I good enough? And the imposter syndrome, the alleged imposter syndrome that no one wants to talk about, so I will. Um, so what happened was I was looking at my friends that have very high pay, paying tech jobs that are very happy in, at their workplace and kind of go, okay, that looks awesome. I, I definitely believe in that. It was definitely one of my long time goals. Um, let, let's just go and do, let, let's just do that. Let's just do that. I have to do it. It would definitely help me get out of this situation, this fog thing that I'm feeling. Let's just do it. I need this. This needs to happen. So it turned, the problem there, and if you notice my own words, carefully chosen, um, is that it became more of a, I need this to get out of my current situation than something, this is who I am, this is what I believe in, this represents me, I'm gonna go and do that. So I was kind of looking at it as a fix that I also kind of, it was kind of a long time goal, but I was looking at it more as a fix than this makes sense, this is me, this is why I do this. So guess what happened? I failed. I failed because I was more interested in it being the answer to everything and me impressing people. And every time I was talking with someone, I was like, I need this. I need this, so I need to do it. I need to kick ass. This needs to happen. Which, if you listen to like my explanation around fear and anxiety and such, um, it actually takes a lot from your brain capacity. You can't really problem solve when you're more focused about other people's perception about you. And when you're more focused about you know, how you feel about the situation than actually going into it, you know, brain sparkling, yay, let's just like make this a great moment. Um, so I failed and I failed and I failed and I ended up at some point going like, uh, screw you universe, like this is, I don't know how to cope with this. And it kind of happens, it happened that I was reading this great book at the time called Shantaram and again, we can talk about it later. Um, and there's a quote in there that said, surrender before you can win. And I remember going, what, what, what is that? Like, I'm the kind of person that's like a fighter. I'm gonna go and rule the universe. I don't know what surrendering is. Like, it's, life's messy, you clean it up kind of thing, that kind of attitude. And I was like, I don't, I don't understand this. So I struggled with it for a while and then I kind of, you know, went on and just tried to find a solution, tried to find a solution, tried to find a solution, problem solved the crap out of it. 
and it got me nowhere. It really did. So I got back to like, screw you universe, and then I decided that I don't have the answers anymore. So I kind of have to just let go. And that's what ended up happening. Remembering my vampire day, uh, I realized that what triggered me having the epiphany, this is why I'm afraid of heights, is asking myself why. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid of standing on one leg in your own living room? Why are you afraid? Why did this happen? What triggered it? What's going on? So for me, parsing and understanding means clarity. And turns out, I realized that I'm the kind of person that functions when I have clarity. If something's foggy, if I'm not sure, if I don't have the right words, if I don't have the right idea, then I'm gonna probably just not sound good. So with that in mind, I kind of went, okay, now I understand what I need. So let's see how I get that. So something that I asked myself was, what is it that makes sense for me? So I'm here, nothing seems to work anymore. Past is past, future is future, I'm here. Um, I kind of have nothing to lose, so what is it that makes sense? Wh where am I right now? And then I went, what is it that I believe in? I spent 27 at the time years of my life going, I have very strong opinions. I have very strong opinions, I have values, I read philosophy, I can debate the crap out of anything. What is it that I believe in though? It gets very noisy around me, people are very opinionated. What is it that I believe in? What makes me me and what makes me have a voice? And I realized that I need a voice to be able to, you know, be me and be happy. Which kind of goes like, also, what are the deal breakers? And are those real or society imposed? What is it that if I disagree? Where is it that I stand? How flexible my mind is? Do I disagree just because I really truly believe in that? Or is it some sort of value that creeped in from my childhood? It was something that needed to be asked. Um, so it's kind of lost in the noise. And I realized that what I have to do is basically just reconnect, reconnect with myself. As I know this sounds very flower power and I'm an engineer, I'm gonna go uh, to how to actually address, like how, how do you actually do that? What I found to be very useful for me is setting targets for every week. I am very unorganized. I am trying very hard to be disciplined, which is something that Jim actively, actively teaches me every day, discipline, going and doing it, even if you feel like I just wanna watch Netflix today. And setting targets for every week that can also be transformed into actions. That is something very important. So less flower power, more I'm actually going to do that. And then something that can be compared to last week, because I need progress, because my confidence at the time was non-existing. So I just needed to appreciate the small wins. I also added a checkpoint every three weeks. The reason why I did that, three weeks is very intuitive. You, it, you can, it can be anything. It could be four weeks, it could be like six weeks. I've seen people that do it at six weeks. I've decided three weeks because I'm, I don't have patience. So three weeks is kind of long, long enough to mean something, yet short enough that I would still keep interest for myself. Looking back and tracking progress and kind of comparing where I am right now with where I was before and what I gained. And I also realized that small wins are better and less scary. Um, it's more easy for me to be focused. It's more easy for me to set a target if I focus on something that I gained right now rather than this crazy monthly, yearly, I'm gonna be great and rule the world thing. I also want, wanted to fail fast and learn fast. If I'm doing something wrong, I know I'm impatient, so I wanna know what I'm doing right now. And focus on building rather than conquering. I, when you have no confidence, you can't go pretending that you have confidence. If you do, you're going to fail, which is exactly what happened to me numerous times. So if it's something that I learned from it, was that if you focus on building, if you focus on improving rather than going, yay, chances are you're gonna succeed. And chances are that you're going to feel a bit better about yourself and just keep going further. Don't stop until you feel entitled. I think entitlement became something, and I was actually reading uh, about this on, on a book re recently by Mindy Colling called Why Not Me? And she made a really good point that, you know, what's wrong with feeling entitled? What, what's wrong with feeling like you own this? You have to own that, it's, it's who you are. But if you do act as if you're entitled, you might as well just be entitled. So you have to absolutely own it, absolutely have to believe in it. Don't stop until you believe in it. And if there's something that's stopping you from believing in it, go ask yourself why again, create that parser again, and realize what's missing. Okay, I also started looking at athletes. I have a feeling that this font 
mic is a bit too big and it's kind of, yeah, anyway. So um, I started looking at athletes and I was reading a really good article at the time about how athletes prepare for a competition. And it turns out they use something called mental imagery. And what that means is that days before the event, they actually go on imagining the entire race bit by bit. They imagine every possible situation, good and bad. And then uh, in the day of the race, they would feel like that is more familiar. It's something that astronauts do as well, but with less imagining and more actually training in highly specialized labs. Since we're, I'm a normal person and I don't have that, my mind would do. They also use something called motivational specific imagery, which um, means that just basically remembering what it felt like when you achieved something, when you were proud about something, and just try to like hold on to that moment. So basically think and you will become, and again, there's a lot of studies that show that our brain is actually very flexible, and that um, if you, Im like imagining something and thinking about something uh, lights up the same portions of the brain as if you were actually doing it, and there's actually physical, both physical and mental gains from that. Again, I could talk about that for an entire day. If you're <laughs> interested about it, let's talk after. Okay, so now you kind of know what you need to do. How do you go about keeping that in your life? How do you go about, because like interviewing is just temporary, every moment in your life is just temporary. How do you go about holding that on the long term? So I'm gonna talk a bit about good culture. This is gonna go very fast. Um, something that I learned from my current employer, which is Intercom, is that it's very important to talk about it and be open. We are incredibly intelligent human beings and we're going to be surrounded by incredibly intimidating, incredibly intellig uh, intelligent human beings, which means at some point you're gonna go, oh shit, I don't know what this is about. And to give you an example, when I joined Intercom, my tech background is completely different than what they're doing in, in Intercom. And it was a challenge, and going there I was kind of like, okay, it feels like starting over, and everyone, everyone, everyone's just brilliant, my colleagues are brilliant. Um, but what really, really helped, uh, besides, you know, like, actively preparing and hard work and like going into it is to be able to talk about it and be open. Intercom is a company that's very open and speaks very freely about imposter syndrome. I've had it in like a mention in uh, different conversations across lunchtime. We're very, very open about that. Value progress over the near win. Uh, again, for the same reason, um, it will give you, it will put things into perspective and it's a great, great confidence builder. It's also good to get a mentor because turns out we're not alone. There's chances are if you get the conversation going, there's people that have been through a similar thing. We just, we're not used to talk about failures. We're used to talk about success stories. Success stories are sexy. Failure is kind of like depressed, bad. I don't want that in my life. I already struggle with so many things. We're so busy people. But talking about it actually helps. And if you bring it up, chances are there's gonna be a lot of people that have an open mind about that and they're gonna help you. And also celebrate the small wins and the potential. Um, so the way Intercom and my colleagues look at it and what that taught me is that feeling is natural and it's also temporary, unless you let it be more. Um, talking about good culture, gym, yoga, and climbing, what that taught me is be patient, trust the progress, trust the pro process. Sorry, uh, the reason for that is that I, I do like strength training again, le less irrelevant for the talk. But you cannot go ahead and lift I don't know how many pounds, pounds from day one, but you can if you keep at it. If you keep at it, there's a reason why the health industry is so popular right now. It actually works. It actually works, and it will teach you to be patient. It will teach you to listen to your body and listen to what you need because if you don't, you're going to physically injure yourself. And it's also, it's very, very rewarding. So it's gonna allow you to celebrate and embrace pro uh, progress. So to conclude, be open, be vulnerable. Don't be afraid, stand tall. Be honest, it's the best that you can do. And the people that like you will follow. The people that wanna listen, they will. If someone doesn't like you, it happens. We have different personalities, we're different people. We're going to clash, that's okay. Doesn't make you better and it doesn't make you worse either. It just makes you, you. If you have to compromise to a point of denying yourself, you have to be honest and say and admit that you are not going to be happy anyway. If denying yourself, you cannot be happy. So at least be free and at least have a little fun. Thank you.